There are many things that make a horror game truly terrifying. A combination of music, scenery, and overtones, just to name a few. But the main thing is always what are you fighting or running away from. Resident Evil 4 is no stranger to all the mentioned requirements, with it being one of the most eerie and thrilling horror shooters I've ever played. As far as what you're fighting and running away from, Resident Evil 4 has some of the most grotesque and downright interesting bosses of any shooter of its time. Each one offered a unique fight that usually involved keeping a cool head on your shoulders and using the environment to your advantage to bring down what you were fighting. Some of them just pursued relentlessly and required you to dump round after round into them though, which made one of the main combat aspects of the game a crucial part to your playthrough. That was upgrading your weapons. Whether you wanted to be right up in your enemy's face or far off dropping foes with a long-range rifle, Resident Evil 4 offered both options either found in-game or for purchase from the elusive merchant. But as you browsed his wares, you may have skimmed down to the bottom and come across some interesting firearms. Weapons that cost much more than you probably thought at the time you could ever afford, and some that just seem, for lack of better words, interesting. As I flipped through these weapons though, the main stat I was always looking at was the damage and reload speed. Because I want to be able to put down enemies and reload my weapon as fast as possible, allowing the max mobility for the max damage. But, sometimes I'm willing to make an exception. Sometimes a weapon has the look, the name, and the feel that I just can't ignore. Enter the hand cannon. This massive revolver shown resting over Leon's shoulder when equipped is every bit of pure power that anyone could ever want from a weapon in a horror shooter. With the looks and firing animation that makes every time the trigger is pulled a shot of dopamine into my veins. Best part about this weapon is that when it's maxed out stat wise it gains a cool little perk where it has unlimited ammo with no reloads. Which is nice. And by nice, I mean literally the best thing ever. Along with not having to reload this world ender of a weapon at achieving maxed out status, it also has the max damage that can be achieved by a firearm in this game. What that means is it's a point click walk away type of weapon. But how does it fare against the strongest enemies in the game? Let's find out. In the beginning of Resident Evil 4, the first moment that feels like a boss fight to me is when you walk into the town. And it's not that you're fighting one big monster or one big enemy, it's that the whole entire town is trying to kill you, and there's just a lot of people. Everyone I ever talked to the first time they were playing this game always took a stealthy approach here because it was offered to you. You only had two paths to go, left or right. Right took you into the center of town where you could clearly see at least five enemies in sight, or left took you behind all the houses allowing you to go and take a stealthy approach. Normally, and under normal circumstances, I would take the stealthy approach because, you know, it's a horror game and I just want to survive, but there's a new sheriff in town. And I want to show everybody my shiny new badge. So I take that right path. And I walk in the center of town and I let everyone taste my pain. <laughs> and as you can tell, everyone was just dying to meet me. So after getting close and personal with Mendez in the house behind you, as you walk out the back door into the alley to try to continue on with your journey, you run into one of the most iconic enemies in Resident Evil 4, Burlap Ben, AKA the Chainsaw Guy aka Dr. Salvador. That actually being his real name, Dr. Salvador, but we all just call him the Chainsaw Guy for obvious reasons. Quite terrifying the first time you run into him, but now, not so much. Now this enemy normally would be extremely terrifying. After all, a man with a burlap sack over his face running at you with a chainsaw is quite intimidating and not something you'd probably run into in your everyday life. But, just like in the town beforehand, things are a little bit different this time. So as you progress further along in the game, you run into Capcom's version of Shrek, El Gigante. So besides the cool cutscene that occurs right when you first run into him, his intro lasts about as long as his outro. So when you roll into the ambush barn, you're greeted by the big cheese himself, Hugsy McGee Mendez. After the cutscene, he goes full accordion on you and shows you a little bit more spine than you probably asked for. Surprisingly though, it takes two shots from the hand cannon to make Mendez half the man he used to be. After you remove Mendez's legs, he tries to go full acrobatics on you and Spider-Man around the burn barn. And after two more shots with the hand cannon, Mendez goes down. When you get into the castle, the first boss-like enemy you run into is known as Garador. So I know he has a weak spot on his back, but honestly I wanted to see what the hand cannon would do if I just shot him square on. And as you can see, it doesn't kill him in one shot, but then the second shot does it. When I ran into the metal one, he's a tad bit stronger, but he still died in two shots. 
Now enter the MVP for the hand cannon challenge, Salazar's left hand man himself, the Verdugo. I was nervous when I first started this engagement because I kind of figured it would end like the rest of them in one or two shots, but this guy surprised me. With straight hand cannon shots, nine total is what it took to bring him down. The fight with the double gigantes in the mine went just the same as the other two. This one though, without any cutscene to slow me down, just turned into a blast and pass. There wasn't a single fight I looked forward to more in this whole entire game than when I was finally going to catch up with Salazar. So after fusion dancing with his right hand man inside this flower, he turns into a giant snake guy. One hand cannon shot to the eye on the giant tentacle waving around in your face opens up Salazar to be damaged. This one surprisingly took three shots to put him down. Personally, one of my favorite enemies in Resident Evil 4 definitely has to be this next one. It's known as the Regenerator. Normally, a Regenerator requires a thermal scope to defeat, but with one shot with a hand cannon, it literally evaporates. The Iron Maiden, though a thousand times more terrifying than the normal Regenerator, still went down with just one shot from the hand cannon as well. U3 to me kind of feels like the oddball out of all the enemies inside Resident Evil 4. To me it feels like it was just a boss that they put in as something for you to fight before you went to fight Krauser. The very monstrous in its form, three shots from the hand cannon, puts this puppy down. Next up on our list, Krauser. Normally this guy's all about closing distance with you, but I made it a little hard for him to do that just by standing a little left to center you might say. The cool thing about Krauser, shooting him square in the shield does absolutely nothing to him and doesn't halt his pursuit of you in any way, shape, or form. But three well-placed hand cannon shots and this guy goes down. And now for the final boss, the big man himself, Sadler. Being one of the more strategic fights in Resident Evil 4, Sadler requires being shot in eyes that can be located on the joints of his main legs. After being shot in his legs, his face opens up where you can deal real damage to him. But regardless of where I ended up shooting him, it only took five shots from the hand cannon and some steel beams to bring down this big boy. So in conclusion, the hand cannon is a beast of a weapon. You pull the trigger and things die. It turns the scare factor down to zero and the hunted becomes the hunter. Hey guys, Metamonger here. I hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you all soon.